when I looked up homeschool portfolio on YouTube and Instagram and Pinterest, oh my gosh, I got a little worried. I've had my fair share of like Pinterest mom worthy moments. I would not call myself a Pinterest mom. Like overall, I'm gonna do the least amount of work possible. I might pick a project to do on Pinterest, but then I'm gonna like, I'm gonna cut so many corners, so many corners. I mean, I saw some gorgeous portfolios. I saw just pages and pages and pages of children's work. We had just finished second grade and I am like a huge advocate of not doing too much school too early. I don't even start my kids on any kind of academic work until they're like six or seven. Um, and even then we go super light. And so I had just finished doing second grade with my eight year old. I did not have pages and pages of work to show for all the school and all the learning that my child did that entire year. But some parents turn in these portfolios, not only to their evaluator, they'll turn it into the school district. Like, no, don't do that because then you're setting the standard for every other parent out there who's doing their very best to homeschool their children. Keep it simple, make a book list, you know, just anything you can think of. It's actually really not that difficult to make a substantial homeschool portfolio to show to your evaluator. So that's why I wanted to make this video because I want to show you what we did last year and what we did for this past year. Both of them are very similar, but I put a lot more effort into the one I did the first year. And then the one that we did this year, man, I just like, I, I had, oh, I never picked up my pictures at Walgreens. I printed out all these pictures to put in the portfolio. I forgot to pick them up and I was like, you know what, screw it. Like, I don't even think she's gonna care, honestly. <laughs> This is how I store his portfolio from last year. I just put everything in this manila folder. When I turned it into the evaluator, I had it in this binder. I had, I printed out this little thing. I put everything in sheet protectors and I went ahead and made this year's portfolio. I just took everything out. I stuck it in this manila folder and I figured, you know what? This is a good way of just keeping our portfolio every year. And I really like having this to look through. Can you imagine like in 10 years from now when I'm going through and looking at all their homeschool stuff and y'all, this is all I'm keeping for the year. That's it. You don't need to keep boxes and boxes. You don't need to keep every single workbook. State testing is only required for third, fifth, and eighth grade. We did it through academic excellence. You have to have something that shows that you completed either 180 days of school or 900 hours. And so we just did the days because it's easier. This is what I did for math. We kind of very loosely followed math lessons for living education. I kind of just gave a basic rundown of what we studied here and there, place value, even and odd, and then just different ways math kind of popped up into our lives, baking and cooking with fractions. We played, he loves logic games, so I made sure to include that. He did a lot of work on Khan Academy. This is what we did for science. Science in the early years, so much of your life is spent doing science with kids. Every time you go outside, every time you take a hike, Every time your child picks up a worm and studies it, you go to the zoo, put it under science. You have science-related games. North American birds, flower families. My kids didn't know they were doing school. Next we have social studies and geography. They love puzzles. These are really cool. I actually learned more about my European countries putting this together. If you, you go on Google Maps, like there's so many things that you can do with your kids to give them a good education. And then physical education, PE is so easy. Kids are kids. If kids are allowed to be kids, they're going to get in their physical education. Or what did my son call it? He called it vegetal allocation when he was five. Arts and music. We read a few art books, not too many. They made a rocket with recyclables, that's so cool. And I didn't even think about it until I was making this portfolio and I was like, oh, I should add that. I just picked what I thought was a broad example of um, the different math that he learned this year. Like obviously didn't put too much of an effort into it, but <laughs> more of an effort than I put in this year, let me tell you. Okay, I am giving y'all a complete real life view of my house here. <laughs> You know, we all have Instagram, don't we? Like, just I just went through my Instagram and I picked the pictures out of him, you know, cooking and playing chess and going on hikes and look at that, he's looking for tadpoles. That was a super cool experience. We went to a sunflower farm and then we actually planted our own sunflowers. The evaluation happened before the sunflowers grew, but good Lord, 
did they ever grow. They were like 15 footers. It was a little ridiculous. They went to a farm camp. I knew all of this was education as it was happening. I really didn't value it as education until I started writing everything down and it really hit me like, wow, my kids did so much. They learned so much this year. They had some great life experiences. This is River's history narration that he did at the end of the year. Here's copy work. I just included a few examples or one example, I guess. Under each subject, I made a book list. What I did was actually super simple. I literally just went through every children's book that we own. I held it up and I said, did you read this one? Did you read this one? And he is the one who told me what books they read. And then I went through and I looked at each one and okay, wolves and coyotes. That is obviously a science book. Nature anatomy, birds, nests, and eggs. And you know, he had a really nice list of books at the end of the year. Then language arts, same thing with the book lists. And so there's some of the things that we did. We played games, silly sentences is a great game for learning just basic grammar and sentence structure. Books that we read aloud that year and then his personal book lot. And these are just the ones that didn't necessarily fit into history or social studies or science. Okay, and like I said, our portfolio this year is a lot simpler. As you can see, we even do school on the weekends sometimes. And this year I hand wrote everything down. An example of his copy work, a poem that he wrote. Again, just super simple. Hiking, explored the creek near a house, and our book list of science books. Math, pretty much the same thing as last year. Played a lot of logic games, used Khan Academy, used our math book. Some examples of the math that he did. In history this year, I included history, geography, and social studies all on one page. They're so intertwined. Health and safety. I never make a point to just sit down and talk about safety, but we talk about safety all the time. Like, what do you do if your sister falls in the water and she can't swim? What do you do if there's a house fire? I really hope that if you are a new homeschooler in Pennsylvania, and you're a little bit worried about putting together a portfolio, I hope that this will be kind of a comfort to you. You don't need to do anything elaborate. You don't need to do something super detailed. And if you don't have a lot of physical work to show for everything that your children have been learning this past year, it's okay. Just write down what you know they did, write down how they thrived, include things that aren't necessarily considered school. One thing that I included in the math section was that my son, he plays Zelda Breath of the Wild. Sometimes um, we talk about the different currency within the game. It's like if you have 20 rupees, how many mon does that make? And so something like that goes so easily under the math portion. Think outside the box. Your kids are learning all the time. It doesn't necessarily always have to be pen to paper. In fact, I would venture to say that the best learning is not pen to paper learning. It's not in a textbook. Give yourself credit for the work that you do for your children. Write down everything you can think of and you're going to be totally fine.